Today we're looking at the multi-electric modified eel system. We have two generators. We have one trailer that has a regulator, a control panel, and another trailer with a second regulator on it. We also have some cable rails on there. What we do is install the generator power cables. There's a set installed on each generator. With the colors as shown, white goes to neutral, black goes to phase one, green to phase two, and red to phase three. Then we take the other end of the generator power cable and bring it to the control panel. As you can see, there are two generator inputs, generator one power and generator two power. We decide which generator we wish to be number one, which one we want to be number two, and insert the associated cable into the sockets. Next we connect the generator control cable. The larger cable end connects inside the generator near the power control panel. And then we connect the other ends of the cables into the generator 1 and generator 2 control connectors on the control panel. Next step in the process is to connect the regulator control cables. One end connects onto the regulator. And the other end connects to the control panel at the regulator 1 and 2 control panel. The next step is to hook up the regulator power cables. Again, we have one short length and one long length. Uh, in this case, we are calling the regulator that is on the same trailer as the control panel is number one. The longer length we are putting on number two because we have a longer run. So now we have our generator power cables, our regulator power cables, generator control cables, and regulator control cables all connected to the two generators and the two regulators. Now we have three cables that are going to our load. We've uh, marked the one that's going to be our return with the yellow tape. Uh, what we could do is we'll take one that's not marked, plug it directly into one of our regulators. It doesn't matter which side. And then we'll take the other one that's not marked and plug it into the other regulator. And again, it doesn't matter which side. Then we take our T-connector, which has a female plug on this side, and we connect it to that one that we've marked off. So we're left with a female and a male end on the T-connector, one side of each, which will go to each of the regular. So we have one length of cable that has a male on each side of it, and we'll hook one end of that into the female side of the T-connector. And we plug the other side of it into either regulator. It doesn't really matter. Finally, we take the length of cord that has a female on one side and a male on the other and connect this to the other end of the T-connection. Here the female on our length of cable goes into the T-connector. While the other end is connected to the regulator. Okay, now we need two separate loads. Uh, one load for one of the regulators, we're going to use our lamp load here. Uh, we have about 10 kVA worth of lamps, all on isolation transformers in a series circuit. And on this load, we've got one female end and one male end. The other load we'll be using is our, uh, our load bank here. This is just a series of power resistors in here that we could tap at different points. Uh, we have it set up for 10 kVA here, so we've got one male going into the, to the 10 kVA end, or coming out of it I should say, and on the other end we're hooked up to our common point here, and this too has a male connection. Coming from our regulators we have the three cables, uh, on the outside we have three male pins, and on this side we have three female sockets. Uh, again, the one that we're using for our common return has the yellow tape on it. Okay, now we're going to take our T-connector, which on this side has a male connection. So we plug the one end from our load bank into the female side of the T-connector. Take the female side from our light bank and bring it over to the T-connector. And we connect our light bank to the other side of the T-connector. This leaves us with two female cables from the outside. We're going to take one of them and bring them over to our load bank. Connect the female end to the load bank here. Now we only have one cable left and that's the female. We're going to connect that to the light bank over here. 
And this connects to the other end of our light bank circuit. This is the control panel of the generator. We start by turning the panel lights on. This will give us our display. Then we bring the master control to the on position. Once we do that, we'll have 24 volts at the control panel. And we see the load on generator light begin to flash at a rate of once per two seconds. The load on generator lights will continue to flash until both of the generators are fully initialized and the computers are online. To start the system, we put the master control in the local position and we will bring both of the generators into the auto start position. The generator will start within four seconds of turning it into the on position. And generator one by default starts first. Generator 2 is basically in standby mode. If generator 1 should fail, generator 2 will come on. To bring our lamps on, we need to have both of our regulators in the on position on the circuit breaker and in the remote position on the intensity control. And we repeat this for the other regulator. You can see that the regulator on is illuminated, meaning that there's power present, but power is not going out yet. See, we have zero amperes. Now we can start the regulators. Bring it on to the low position first. We have 4.8 amps here, and we have 4.8 amps here. Now, if I come up to medium, both regulators go to 5.5. Finally, if I go to high, they both go to 6.6 .6 amps. That we have about 20 to 22 kilowatts going. We have full loads on both regulators, so that's what we expect. So we now have one regulator power, and we have another regulator powering this load bank, which is full of power resistors. As you can see, we have both generators in the auto start position. So if one fails, the other one should come on automatically. We can simulate this failure by hitting the emergency stop button on the generator. We should immediately hear generator two come online. Which it does. And after a short delay, both of the regulators come back on to high intensity. Now we're gonna shut down the system. First we turn the regulators off. Back at zero. I'm also going to turn the generators off. Generator turns off. And I'm going to take away master control. Thus far, we've kept the loads balanced fairly well between the two regulators. Uh, we've had about 10 kVA on each regulator. Uh, so now we're going to unbalance the load on one of the regulators. You can see that we've uh, changed our taps to uh, 4 kVA here. So now we'll start generator one. Generator one is on. And now even with the unbalanced load, to bring it on to low, medium, and high. And I have no problems. Both regulators are operating at 6.6 .6 amps. And my generator is still pushing out a good amount of power since it's still being drawn by both regulators. But the point here is that even with an unbalanced load, the regulators will continue to operate as they are intended. I can even go one step further here and turn off one of the regu regulators entirely. And even though they share a common return path, the one regulator that's still on continues to produce 6.6 .6 amps. And now we'll shut all the whole system down. Bring your regulator down, shut our generators off, shut our main control off. 